What's up everybody? Today, just a quick tutorial on how to set up a MIDI trigger for Shaperbox 2 in Ableton Live. So this setup is actually pretty simple, but there are a few problems that we can run into and we're gonna cover them in a moment. But for now, let's take a look at the easy setup. So let's say we have a bass channel and we wanna create a side chain and uh, use volume shaper for that, but use a MIDI trigger for some reason. And to do so, we can just create an empty MIDI track and create a MIDI clip inside of that. And now basically program the pattern that we want to use to uh, trigger the sidechain. Let's just stick to a simple four to the four beat uh, right now. And you actually should create decent MIDI notes on the on C3. And now if I press or if I start the clip, we will see that there's some MIDI being created. And now we have to send the MIDI to our shaper box and the, sa the shaper box is on this channel called bass so let's select the bass channel down here and then we have to choose shaper box track in um, yeah to send the trigger to shaper box now to actually use the midi trigger we have to go in this section over here where it says midi trigger and i usually select one shot all right, and now you can see that the MIDI trigger is working if you have this yellow light blinking over here. But now let's uh, jump into the problems because I was, for example, struggling with this for quite a while because if I create a new MIDI track, I already have some preloaded audio effects on there. And what happens if you do that? The track automatically thinks that you want to send audio somewhere. That's why it says audio 2 and it should say MIDI 2 because Shaperbox won't be able to use the audio uh, as a trigger for the uh, MIDI trigger. So what you have to make sure if you want to use the MIDI trigger is delete all the audio effects you have on there. So it says MIDI 2 and now you can actually uh, select your channel and also the Shaperbox. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Something else that I found kind of annoying is the following. The moment you stop your MIDI triggered uh, shaper the volume still drops down by a certain amount and i was wondering why that is and the reason for this is basically that the trigger jumps back to the beginning of your waveform and by default these waveforms are kind of at the beginning below negative 6 db uh, so in order to avoid this you can just simply change up your waveform a little bit or your your shaper form a little bit and as you can see now the the waveform actually or this shape basically starts at zero so now if i trigger uh, this thing again the clip again and i stop the clip you will see that it also starts uh, stops at the top so if you have like a breakdown or something where you don't actually want the bass to be sidechained then um, this would be the way to go but let's say you have a kick with a very strong click at the beginning and you actually want to keep your sidechain very tight there's also a solution you can use to manage this a little bit better and the solution is using the midi switches down here and what the midi switches do is you can basically use different midi notes to trigger different wave shapes and this starts with c sharp and then moves up over to D, D sharp and so on. And what you can do is let's say we want to have our um, this shape as a side chain and use this for uh, C sharp. Actually, let's turn this on. It will say C sharp. But then we also want to have one wave where we don't have any side chaining happening and we're going to save this uh, shape to our D trigger. So now if we go into our MIDI clip, we can actually say, okay, if I trigger C sharp, it's going to trigger my sidechain so this would be on if i duplicate this clip and call this off we would have to remove our c sharp and use our d trigger so now if i trigger this clip where it says on it's actually triggering a sidechain and now if i click uh, trigger the clip where it says off it's actually not going to have any sidechaining happening and you can also use this to like change your shape within uh, a few steps or something like this so let's say for example we have like a drum fill at the end of a phrase and we want to have three kicks where the sidechain is on and then one where it's off then we can technically just have this trigger back here and then trigger the d sharp for that add a d for that so now you can see we have three times being triggered 
at one time being off, which is pretty cool. And now there's one last important thing, which uh, also took me a while to figure out. It's obviously kind of annoying that you have to create a single MIDI track for each instance of ShaperBox that you want to trigger. But there's also a solution for this. So let's say we have another track where we have some keys or something, and we also have a, a shaper box in here, and we want to trigger both of them, which is this one channel. We can actually head over to our instruments, select an external instrument, and group this together. Open up this uh, thing so you can see the different chains. Now in our external instrument, we can also pick that we want to send the MIDI to our base and it's automatically going to go to Shaverbox. And now if I duplicate this chain, I have another external instrument and here I can pick keys, which is also going to send the same MIDI to a different Shaverbox in the keys channel now. So since we have both of these open, let's take a quick look. If I now, if we now trigger our three on one off MIDI clip, you can see that they're behaving in the exact same way and just being triggered by one MIDI channel. And what you can do if you don't want to do this setup every single time you use ShaperBox is uh, save your template in a way where you already have one of these channels ready with uh, this instrument rack for external instruments. And then you basically just have to set have to set this up once and have this in your projects every single time you open a new project. Yeah, I hope this helped and a happy side chaining. Peace.